Jesus concluded his teaching on prayer, that portion of scripture that which we refer to as the Lord's Prayer, he said this to his disciples, if you then being evil, now I'm reading from the Amplified Bible, if you then being evil, that is sinful by nature, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask him? Now, today we are talking about the power principle. The power principle, and this is the last principle or precept and this teaching on the Lord's Prayer that we've been doing. Stephen Furtick made this statement. He said, simple acts of, of obedience produce great miracles. Let me say that again. Simple acts of obedience produce great miracles. Now, and here's an example. In Acts chapter 1-4, Jesus commanded his disciples. He said, wait for the promise of the Father which you have heard from me. And he said, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit and you will receive power when he comes upon you. Power for what? Power to be, power to do, power to become. Ephesians 3.20, I think I've used this throughout our teachings. One of my favorite verses, it says this, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly above all that we ask or think, you see that? Ask or think according to the power that works in us. What is that power that works in us? It's the power of the Holy Spirit as we ask God for his spirit as if we ask him for power as he as we ask him to make us into what we can become and should become peter marshall made this statement he said god will not permit any troubles to come upon us i wish that was true like god would not permit any troubles to come upon us but here's the rest of the statement unless he has a specific plan by which great blessing can come out of difficulty I've gone through so many difficulties and God, please don't let me go through this, please God. But every time I've gone through a difficulty, he empowers me and enables me, causing me to rise up to meet that difficulty with his spirit, with his power. And somehow, some way, I always come out on top. Uh, Isaac Singer, last quote, he says this, the answer to your problem lies at the point of your contact with God. If you are willing to make an effort in seeking Him, great miracles and wonderful treasures are in store. Now let me tell you a story. It was June the 12th, it was 1873. The farmers in southwestern Minnesota saw this great cloud. It just looked like a big giant crowd rolling into their area. And as it grew closer and closer, they heard these noises and these sounds and all of a sudden they realized what it was. It was a great cloud of grasshoppers coming and those grasshoppers came and just just begin to eat their crops. I mean, they just ate them to the ground, ate all their wheat to the ground, ate their grass. Everything was gone. It was like somebody just set a fire and it, it, they, it, it all went away. This happened for five years in a row in that area, along Minnesota and some of the neighboring states. For five years in a row it happened. Here we are now. It's April the 26th. It's 1877. Um, the governor, Governor Pillsbury, Governor Pillsbury declared a day of prayer, a day where they would, the state would seek God. Everything closed, the businesses, the schools, everything shut down. The people stayed in their houses, and what did they do? They prayed, why? Because for five years in a row, their land had been devastated, and they couldn't stand another one. And they needed a miracle from God. And so they stayed in their houses, and they prayed, and they sought God. It was unusually quiet in the whole state. And um, it was just very, very different. Now it is April the 27th, day after prayer. It was an unusually warm day. It was April, an unusually warm day. The farmers went out to look at their crops, look out to go check on things, and all of a sudden they saw something that absolutely, literally terrified them. They saw billions upon billions upon billions of grasshopper larvas beginning to wiggle, come to life. They were just coming to life in time to, to, to eat the crops that had just been planted. And they were absolutely terrified. Guess what happened? Two days later, two days later, a giant snowstorm swept through that area, swept through the state and uh, destroyed almost every one of those larvas. Like somebody came with a fire or an exterminator, just came through and destroyed it all. And that year, the year of 1877, they had great crops in abundance. God answered the prayers of his people. That day became known as 
the day where God answers the prayers of his people. I'm here to tell you today, God will answer your prayers. He will empower you to be, to do, and to accomplish what he wants you to accomplish. That's what I want to pray for today. Maybe you haven't made a commitment to Jesus. Today would be that great day. He'll give you the power to be the person that he created you to be, to do what he created you to do. I want to pray for you. And I know these are hard times for all of us here at the church. We're experiencing it as well. But I know this, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And he's going to help us through it. And he's going to help you through it. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, for that man, that woman, that boy, that girl, that young person that tuned in to us today and don't even know how they got here, but they're listening. And I pray in Jesus' name, they'll open their hearts up to you. They don't know you. They know about you, but they don't know you. They'd open their hearts up to you and they would experience, God, you working in their lives. They would experience forgiveness and hope and a new beginning. In Jesus' name, I pray. Just open your heart, receive him in. That's the first step. For you who may just be struggling, you've gone through something, maybe you've gone through sicknesses, maybe you've gone through hardship, maybe you've lost jobs. I wanna pray for you that God will help you through this. Just like he did those farmers in Minnesota in 1877, how they set aside a day of prayer and God moved miraculously. Even after they prayed, it didn't look good. But just a short time afterwards, God moved. And God will do the same for you. They're no different than we are. And God is the same as he has always been. And he's going to help you. Father, in the name of Jesus, help the people there who are listening to me today, struggling, needing a miracle. It just seems like everything has gone wrong for them. And I pray in Jesus' name that you'll turn that around and things will start going right. Touch their lives. Bless them in every way. Move in them, oh God. And thank you. Thank you, Lord that you love your people, you believe in them, and you're working in their lives. Thank you for joining us again for Just a Thought. We will see you next week where we'll have another Just a Thought.